Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing good. In our this particular video, we will be continuing with biomolecules and we will be taking specifically one particular vitamin, which is vitamin A1, which is also known as retinol. Vitamin A1, as we know, is very much essential for the synthesis of visual pigments. Its deficiency causes night blindness. Okay. So in this particular topic or in this particular video, what we'll be trying to find out is what is the source of vitamin A1? And as we know that one of the sources of vitamin A1 is carotenoids. So we'll be first trying to understand that what is carotenoids, okay? where they are found. Then what we'll be trying to understand it is beta carotene as a source of vitamin A1. Then we'll try to synthesize vitamin A1 from beta ionone. And finally, we'll be trying to take the chemistry of vision, how vitamin A1 help us actually to see. Okay. So all these topics we'll be trying to take in our video. So let us start with carotenoids. Carotenoids are tetra terpenes that are yellow, orange, and red pigments that are produced by plants and algae, as well as several bacteria and fungi. Okay, so carotenoids are nothing but tetraterpenes, okay, that are usually yellow, orange, or red pigments, okay, that are produced by plants, algae, and various bacteria and fungi. Lycopene, the compound responsible for red coloring of tomatoes and watermelon, okay, and beta carotene, the compound that causes carrots and apricots to be orange, are example of carotenoids, okay. So in this particular video, we'll be basically talking about beta carotene, okay? Beta carotene and other colored compounds are found in the leaves of trees. So remember that they are also found in the leaves of trees, but trees, we use, uh, the leaf of the trees, we usually see it as green. We don't see it as orange or red or yellow in color, okay? Because their characteristic colors are usually obscured by the green color of chlorophyll. Okay, so when this leaf falls, then what will happen? Usually the chlorophyll degrades and then the color of this leaf usually becomes red or yellow or orange. Okay, then only this particular carotenoids becomes apparent. Okay. It is mainly, uh, if you try to see carotenoids, okay, they, are, they have many conjugated double bonds, okay, in lycopene or in uh, that of beta, uh, beta carotene, okay, and that causes the compound to be very colored, okay. So the color of this particular carotenoids is basically due to the uh, uh, conjugated double bonds in which they have, okay. We'll be trying to see the structure in our upcoming uh, sessions. So let us try to see first beta carotene. So this is beta carotene, as I was telling you, see the amount of, or the number of conjugation which it has, okay? It is a highly conjugated system, which makes it very colored, okay? So when you talk about beta carotene, okay? The name beta carotene comes from the Greek words, okay? Beta is a Greek word and the uh, carotene is actually a Latin word, carota, okay? That is nothing but carrot. It is, a precursor of vitamin A1. So remember that uh, this uh, vitamin or beta carotene is a precursor of vitamin uh, A1, okay? So when we take this uh, foods which contains uh, carotenoids or basically your um, beta carotene, then basically that beta carotene converts to vitamin A1 in our body, okay? It was discovered in 1907, okay? Beta carotene is converted into vitamin A1, as I have told you, okay? And beta carotene is also an antioxidant, remember that. So if you try to see the molecular formula of beta carotene, it is C40H56, it's a hydrocarbon, okay? It's a pure hydrocarbon. And if you see, 
they have a basic structure and made up of isoprene unit okay so if you see it is isoprene unit so if i just show you what is isoprene this is isoprene okay which you can uh, really if you want to see it's over here also you can see it's over here so it's over here also it's over here also so basically it's a repeating unit of isoprene okay and in all if you try to see how many isoprene units are there it was if you try to calculate you will find out eight isoprene unit which are actually cycle uh, which are which get cyclized uh, at each end okay you can see the chain get cyclized at the uh, each end of beta carotene okay Then beta carotene as a source of vitamin A1. So when we take uh, such uh, fruits or foods, okay, which contain beta carotene, so that beta carotene converts in our body to vitamin A1. Now the question is how? How it's actually uh, how it is uh, converted to vitamin A1? Okay. So there are several steps in this reaction. So let us take it step by step. So in this first step, what happens is the beta carotene. Okay, this is beta carotene, you can see, okay. The beta carotene takes up, actually get oxidized, okay, by molecular oxygen, by the presence of an enzyme, which we call as beta carotene 15 comma 15 dash dioxygenase, okay. So with the help of that particular enzyme, okay. So as I have told you, beta carotene 15 comma 15 dioxygenase, Okay, this enzyme catalyzes the chemical reaction which cleaves beta carotene. So it will cleave beta carotene over here. Okay, it is the middle double bond. Okay, if you see that is the middle, okay, exactly the middle of this particular molecule, beta carotene. So this particular double bond is cleaved, okay, utilizing molecular oxygen, which you can see, which is enhanced by the presence of bile salt and thyroxin. Okay, and generates two molecules of retinol, which we'll be trying to see in our upcoming steps. In human, this particular enzyme, which we are talking about, is present in our small intestine and liver. Okay, so in the first step, that is what happens. Then in the second step, what happens is it gets hydrolyzed. Okay, the product gets hydrolyzed and it gives you a diol. Okay, and in the third step, that diol finally cleaves to give you, that is what we call as retinol, okay? So this is nothing but a retinol. You can see it is an aldehyde, okay? And this retinol then converts into retinol, okay? So that is our vitamin A1, okay? With the help of a particular enzyme, which we call as alcohol dehydrogenase, okay, ADH. And this are a group of dehydrogenase enzymes that occur in many organisms and facilitate the interconversion. Okay, so it converts alcohols to aldehydes, aldehydes to alcohols, alcohols to ketone, ketones to alcohol, okay, by reduction or oxidation of NAD plus to NADH. Okay, so NAD is nothing but nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Okay, that is either reduced or oxidized depending upon the interconversion. Okay, so that is how beta carotene converts to vitamin a1 in our body okay that is why we say that beta carotene is a source of vitamin a1 so that is how we can understand it okay now let us try to understand uh, the synthesis of uh, vitamin a1 can we synthesize it okay so it was possible or it is possible to synthesize vitamin a1 so in this particular synthesis, our starting material is beta ionone, okay, which you can see over here, okay. So this is actually beta ionone. It reacts with the Reformatsky reagent. This is the Reformatsky reagent, okay. So if you don't know what is a Reformatsky reaction, it is a type of reaction that occurs between a haloester and a carbonyl compound, okay. A haloester and a carbonyl compound, you can clearly see a haloester. Okay, in our case, it is gamma bromocrotonate and beta ionone, which is our carbonyl compound. You can easily see over here. Okay, it's a carbonyl compound to give a hydroxy ester. Okay, you can see this is ester which we get and a hydroxy. Okay, this reaction mostly takes place in the presence of zinc. Okay, which we are taking to give you this particular compound, which we call as hydroxyester, which is nothing but alpha beta 
unsaturated ester. Okay, you can see clearly it is un alpha beta unsaturated ester. Okay, so this is the first step. Okay, in the preparation of vitamin A1 from beta ionone. Once we do that, then in step two, the alpha beta unsaturated hello ester which we get. Okay, under acidic condition, oxalic acid. Okay, occur. Uh, or undergoes hydrolysis as well as dehydration. Okay, this ester undergoes hydrolysis to carboxylic acid, and it undergoes this tertiary alcohol under acidic condition undergoes dehydration to give you a double bond, which you can clearly see. This is the tertiary alcohol which undergoes dehydration. Okay, and gives you a double bond in this particular carbon. Okay, then in our step three. What we do is the compound which we get, the carboxylic acid which we get, we treat it with thionyl chloride. So basically, which is a very good chlorinating agent. So this thionyl chloride replaces the OH of the carboxylic acid by Cl, giving you acid chloride. Okay. And in the second step of the same reaction, we react it with methyl lithium. That methyl lithium replaces the Cl with a methyl group. So basically we introduce one more carbon giving you a ketone. Basically it is an alpha beta unsaturated ketone now. Okay. So once we get this, so once we get our carbonyl compound again, since we get our carbonyl compound again, so we again carry out reformatsky reaction. Okay. So we again take actually, or we again carry out the reformatsky reaction since it is carbonyl compound. Okay. So we take a hello ester, okay, and in presence of zinc, we'll again give you a reformatsky product, okay. Once we get that, then in our next step, again similar to step two, what we do is we do the uh, in the acidic condition we carry out the acid hydrolysis as well as the dehydration of the tertiary alcohol, okay which gives us this product, okay? And ultimately, this is nothing but what we call as vitamin A1 acid, okay? So we get a carboxylic acid. This is vitamin A1 acid. This vitamin A1 acid, we reduce it with lithium aluminum hydride, okay? To give you a alcoholic group. So the, uh, the carboxylic group will convert to alcohol group, a primary alcohol group. And this compound which we get is nothing but vitamin A1. So that is how vitamin or the beta ionone is converted to vitamin A1. Okay, so that is how we synthesize vitamin A1 from beta ionone through a series of reaction, mostly reformatsky reaction, uh, dehydration, uh, hydrolysis. Okay, so these are the reactions which are carried out in actually converting uh, beta ionone to vitamin A1. Okay, so now at the end, let us try to understand that how vitamin A1 actually help us in seeing things. Okay, so what is the chemistry of vision? Okay, so that is what we are trying to understand now. So before going into this, remember that the retina of our eye contains two types of cells, okay, which we call the, called as cone cells and we call them rod cells. The cone cells are responsible for color vision and for vision in bright lights. Okay? The rod cells are responsible for vision in dim lights. In rod cells, vitamin A is oxidized to an aldehyde and the trans double bond at C11, we'll try to see that carbon number 11 is isomerized to a cis double bond. So let us try to see that, okay? So this is our vitamin A1, okay? That is retinol. So what happens in, in the rod cell that vitamin A1 is oxidized to aldehyde, okay? Which you can clearly see, it is getting oxidized to aldehyde, okay? And what happens is 
In the process of converting to aldehyde, so basically it will be H here, okay, which is missing over here. This is not CH3, it will be H, okay, CO and H. So this is an aldehyde group. So there is a slight mistake over there. It has to be H. So it will be converting into aldehyde and the trans double bond, okay, which you can see over here. This is a trans double bond, okay, in carbon number 11, okay. So this two are trans to each other, okay. So that particular is isomerized to cis, okay, which you can see here. That is what we're writing as 11Z, okay, so cis, okay, is isomerized to a cis double bond, okay. So the mechanism for the enzyme catalyzed interconversion of cis and trans double bond, okay, is actually helped by a protein, okay. Then this particular uh, protein, which we call as opsin, uses a lysine side chain, okay, to form an imine with this particular retinol, okay, 11Z retinol. So you can see over here, this aldehyde which we get, okay, this aldehyde, okay, there has to be H over here. So this aldehyde, this retinol, which we get in presence of the uh, protein, okay, which we call as opsin, which uses the lysine side chain, okay, to form actually, so this is the lysine side chain, which are, which we are just diag diagrammatically showing it, to form an imine over here. You can clearly see it forms an imine over here, okay, with the 11Z, okay, with the 11Z retinol, resulting in a complex, okay, it results into a complex, which we called as rhodopsin, okay. Once we get this particular complex, okay, so when rhodopsin absorbs visible light, okay, so when this rhodopsin now absorbs visible light, so this rhodopsin now, what will happen? It, it isomerizes through trans isomer. So you can clearly see in presence of visible light, it isomerizes to trans, see, the cis, which you can see clearly in carbon number 11 and 12, will convert to trans, again, okay, trans isomer. This change in molecular geometry, okay, so this change from cis to trans, okay, of rhodopsin, this particular change in the molecular geometry causes an electrical signal, okay. That electrical signal will be sent to the brain where it will be perceived as a visual image. So the change of rhodopsin from the trans to cis sends a signal to the brain, which will be perceived as a visual image, okay? Now, this particular trans isomer is not stabilized, it's not so stable, okay? This particular activated rhodopsin is not that stable, the trans isomer. So what it does it, it easily get hydrolyzed again, okay, to the 11E retinol. So this 11E retinol, okay, again goes for the same, process again goes for the uh, visual cycle. So that is how actually we are able to see with the help of actually vitamin A1. So it is very, very important. That's why we say that vitamin A1 is very much essential for actually our uh, ability to see. Okay. So that is how actually we can understand the chemistry of vision. Okay, how vitamin A1 is very important for our vision. Okay, so that is how actually we can understand what is vitamin A1, what is carotenoids, what is beta carotene, why beta carotene is a very important source of vitamin A1, how we can synthesize vitamin A1 from beta ionone, and finally, why vitamin A1 is very important for actually vision. Okay, so that is what we have understood the chemistry of vision. Okay, so that is how we can understand the uh, vitamin uh, A1. Okay, so thank you everyone. Do subscribe for this channel for explanation on various topics in chemistry.